Jam your hands together as you appreciate the Lord. We can do something better than that. Do something better than that. Appreciate the Lord better than that. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, at this moment, we bless your holy name for a time to feed our spirit man. It's another time for us to hear your word. Pray, O oh Lord, that you give us the heart of understanding and through the mouthpiece, your word. Father, let it be anointed according to your wish in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God that you will hear today, the end will not steal it from you. But it will remain and become part of you that will bring forth fruit worthy of eternal life in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Turn around and look at your neighbor. There are some people that have not been in this church for 1,000 years. Tell them, brother, you are welcome. Welcome people around. Welcome people around. Amen. Say, brother, you are welcome in his presence. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And say, for God, repeat now, say, for God, being the omnipresence, he is presently present here. To present present for all those that are presently present in his presence. I appreciate the Lord for that blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Beloved, we are, I have a little admonishment. A um, word of admonishment this morning. I want to give before then. I want to appreciate this opportunity given to me by our daddy. Let's appreciate our daddy in the house. Appreciate our daddy. It's not everybody that is opportune to have daddy. So when you are opportune to have daddy, make sure you value and appreciate the opportunity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Daddy God will continue to bless you. And this is your grace that is always, you know, God will continue to add to it. Every day of my life, I keep wondering the kind of grace this young man is carrying. I keep wondering. I've never seen. He's not bragging. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. And that is one thing that I've made me cleave to this ministry, starting from where we are coming from. The Lord will make us, you know, feel the manifestation of this grace in our life in Jesus' name. You not only be where the grace is, but you'll be part and parcel of those that will testify of the manifestation of that grace in your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at today's message. A very short and simple message. You know, we have been celebrating the other Sunday was Palm Sunday. The Sunday that we remembered when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And coming to Jerusalem, people decided to honor him as the king of kings. People spread their clothes on the floor. Others cut palm front and spread. So that Jesus, as he was entering to Jerusalem, will be walking not on the ground. You know, that was an honor. And that one signifies the Palm Sunday. You know, after Palm Sunday, the next Friday that comes was now the Easter Friday which was supposed to be actually a bad Friday. But on to all, it was a good Friday. How? It was a Friday that the Lord of the Jews, the King of the Jews, our Savior was crucified. Somebody that we had hope in was killed. So it should have been a very sorrowful day that our hope was destroyed. But just in three days' time, the same Lord that was crucified resurrected. And that was on Sunday we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was why that Friday now became a good Friday. Because assuming Jesus died and could not resurrect, that Friday will rem ever remain a bad Friday. Praise the Lord. If something happened to you in a particular day, that day will be that bad. Another, another word, another vocabulary they used to tag the day now is what? Black. Black day. But our Lord died and eventually resurrected as he has aforesaid. 
Now, what was the significance of his death? His death actually fulfilled the law. There are so many questions that have been in the Old Testament that many evil rights we were asking. A young man asked in the in the, Old, in the, in the, in the book of Psalms, in the Old Testament, he asked, he said, if the foundation be destroyed, my brother, what can the righteous do? There are so many. Because the people that were living in the Old Testament were living under the law. They were waiting for just one thing. As the Lord said, God said that one, not even dot, the dot, or one jot of my word will pass away until they be fulfilled. And every human were waiting for the fulfillment of the law before they would be liberated from under the bond of the law. So everyone was waiting for the expectation which was the fulfillment of the law. And even to today, many has not known that the law has fulfilled. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus came and died that he will abolish so many protocols. I told him the other day that worship, this worship you see that we do today, in the Old Testament, worship was done in the shrine. And that kind of worship that was done in the shrine was followed with what? Animal sacrifice. When you go to worship, you sacrifice animals. When you sin against God, you go and look for a lamb, a goat to buy, to sacrifice, to cleanse, to, to cover your sin. So God, God will not see your sin. But then, the blood of the animal was not able to wash away the sins of man. The blood was only covering the sin. So we, we are waiting for just one master sacrifice that will now wash away the sin. And that was why Jesus was born into the earth. He came, God in flesh, that he will carry out that ultimate sacrifice expected of us. And finally, you know, the enemy thought they were destroying him. They never knew they were helping him to fulfill his mission. Hallelujah. He died. And hopefully, he resurrected. And the sacrifice was completed. Then the curtain, the veil that covered the temple, turned into two, giving us access into the temple. You are now seated in presence of the omnipresence when nobody in those days was worthy, only the priest that would enter. And even the priest that is entering into the, going to the altar to sacrifice this, to, to, to intercede on your behalf, they will have to put chain on his waist. As he's there, they will draw the chain. If he draw back, he's still alive. But when they draw and they not feel a return force, then they will drag him out because his own sin has killed him there. Praise the name of the Lord. In as much as the Lord was guiding his people with the law, he was only guiding all man to the fulfillment of Christ. And today, we are enjoying the benefits of the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ because it has brought us grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But before then, Jesus died, he resurrected, what next? What next? He died and resurrected. For me and you now, what next? That takes us to our topic. The topic of our message this morning is seeking the risen Lord in a wrong place. Seeking the risen Lord in a wrong place. Let somebody look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24, verse 5. I want to be on the fast lane. Luke 24, verse 5. I will read. It says, And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? 
Praise the Lord. If you look at the story from the beginning, according to the book of Luke chapter 24 from verse 1, he said, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This was the story of the women that went very early Sunday morning with some spices, some perfume. Let us go and pour on the body of our Lord so that it doesn't smell. Let's go and prepare the body. But on arriving there, they find out that the body was nowhere to be found. Then the angel asked them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Now, the application of this message to our life today, Jesus died on the cross for you and I and resurrected so that his work of the cross will be complete. And today, many of us are still seeking Jesus where we cannot find him. Today, we that we call ourselves Christians, in terms of affliction and problem, we still run to a place we cannot find the Lord, the Savior. Seeking the Savior in the wrong place. The Easter is gone. Some of us will forget it in the haste. The essence that will remember the Easter, the time that he sacrificed himself to liberate us from the bondage of sin and the law. For the Bible says that nobody is able, nobody is able, nobody can be saved by the law. At times when we look at the Bible and look at, you know, how God was dealing with his people in terms of the law. Instant judgment. Then, I will now compare now. We always believe that that time was more difficult than lie. The time of the law was very easy. Do you know why? <laughs> we, 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 we take grace for granted and believe grace is very simple. Grace is more difficult than the law. In those days, Moses gave the commandment through God. What he collected from God and gave to the children. Asked them to keep it. They were keeping the commandment. And as made that keep the law, they lived. In those days, in terms of adultery and fornication, you, it is counted on to you if you are caught in the act. And what was punishment? At the time they stole, if the woman is stoned to death, only if you are caught in the act. But what does grace say? <laughs> if you look onto a woman and desire in your act, you've already committed fornication. What does grace say? Grace says, if you want to keep the law, fine. Make sure you keep everything. Don't fail in one. If you fail in one, you have failed in all. But the law was not saying so. Amen. If you look at the Bible, in the Old Testament, men of God kept the law. Men of God. People like David, they kept the law of God. Now, if you look at their life, you don't see that they committed sin. Then why did the Bible say they kept the law? Many of them were counted righteous. If you bring them to the standard of this age, you see that they cannot be saved because grace is talking of perfection. Now, the Lord then was only guiding them until because God himself knew that nobody can be saved by this law. The law was only guiding them until its fulfillment. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. Neither do I come. I said, I came that the law might be fulfilled. I came to fulfill the law. Amen. Now, when Jesus died and resurrected, if you look at John chapter 17, which we have our Lord's prayer, I think we think Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 13, when we pray to our Father, say, our Father, why? That is not our Lord's prayer. That was just a pattern, an example, how you should pray. The one talk of the Lord's prayer, the Lord's prayer is John chapter 17. 
When Jesus was praying for us, that was our, that was our last prayer. For God to keep us in this evil world. We are not of the world, but we are living in the world. Father, don't take them out of the world, but protect them. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus having died on the cross and resurrected, he gave an asset because he fulfilled the law. From that time, we, our attention was now shifted from the law to Christ. For the Bible makes us to understand that as many that come unto him, as many that receive him, to them he has given what? The power to become the children of God. And the Bible says when you have become a child of God, you are free from the bondage of the law. It means that Jesus lives in you. It is your, it's your way. It's the truth that you know. And he gives you life. You don't look for law to keep anymore. Even the law that you did not know. The law of righteousness and love come there. Everything begins to fulfill your life because you have gotten the truth. You have gotten the way. You have gotten the life. You are now liberated from the bond of keeping the law. How many law will you keep? But in as much as you have Christ in you, he directs, he leads you, he speaks to you. That gentle little voice is now left for you to pay attention. Praise the name of the Lord. So after his resurrection, what next? Our topic says seeking the risen Lord. In the wrong place. We've celebrated the resurrection. Look at yourself very well. Do you think you still seek the Lord in the right place? When problems or challenges come, where and where do you go to to look for solutions? When the ties of this life arise, the challenges, where do you run to for advice, for counseling? You know, in this society we are, it's so porous. Whenever I'm coming back from work, I'll see a man selling a particular ring. You know, the market will be advertising it. That this ring, you buy it. If you want to enter vehicle, you know, put it. If there's accident, you know, good luck. They'll be saying a lot of things. And they'll tell you the price, very cheap. And some people, are, some people that call themselves Christian will foolishly go and get it. It's very common among us, but they may not tell you. Some of us that call ourselves Christian or church goer, we go and get it. Remember that the devil cannot give you anything free. Somebody says, if the devil gives you a cap, you collect what? You collect your head. If the devil dash your shoe, you collect what? Your leg. So you can't get anything from the devil free. And there is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. To glory, there is no shortcut. Even those that were born with a silver spoon, those that were born, there are some children, somebody was saying, look, you, you only talk about because you have not seen. A lot of children have been born, they've never tested poverty. They were born with, say, go and find out. Their parents or their grandparents must have paid the sacrifice for them. There is no shortcut. You can also pay the sacrifice, the price for your children. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Seeking the risen Lord in the wrong place. There is a name that will bear that is wrong in the course of this. We call ourselves Christians. Seeking the risen Lord in a wrong place. In as much as our Lord and Savior gave himself as the ultimate sacrifice and resurrected back. Then he opened the gates that as many that come unto me, to them I will give the power to become the children of God. How many of us have cleaved unto his death and resurrection? How many of us are still living the way we live, we like, and we call ourselves Christian. That is bearing the wrong name. You can't live the way you like and you say you are a Christian. Amen. 
Your name is uh, supposed to reflect the image of Christ in you. Hallelujah. For the manifestation of the presence of God in you is the reflection of the character of Christ in you. In as much as we've just celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to cleave and remember that sacrifice. It doesn't be in vain. Let's tell ourselves the truth. We claim to be children of God. We say we are Christian. How many of us reflect the life of Christ? Praise the name of the Lord. We must not allow the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ be in vain. Still remaining the way you are, putting on your old man. You are trying to crucify Christ the second time. Apostle Paul says, should we remain continue in sin that grace may abound? Because we are so deceived by the word grace. You see, when we are praying, or when I see people praying, after thanking God, worshiping God, they begin to confess their sin. One day I was praying and I begin to hear, have a ministration in my mind. I find that, that the confession of sin that most of us make is very, very wrong at times. God doesn't even answer. In as much as we are human, in as much as we are flesh, you are expected to confess your sin because at times there are some sin you commit, you don't know. Your unknown sin and the minor ones. But confession is not all about you are a child of God. You go and fornicate and come and confess. That is not it. Let us get it and get it right. Because if you continue in that same way, then you are crucifying Christ in fact, many and more times. How can we call ourselves Christians? But we live here, even while a man is confessing. Lord, you know, you know, the work of the devil yesterday, God forgive me for the adultery. Even that time that he's confessing, his other mind, is telling us tomorrow an opportunity. The Bible makes us understand that when we confess our sin, yes, us, but not when you see you only confess the sin that you fall into. There are some sin that you don't fall into, but you commit them. Sins like fornication, nobody falls into fornication because it has to take with planning. Sins, most of the immoralities are sins. It's a very deep because it has to do with the temple of God, your body. There are things that you, you just fall into. When you talk of fall, fall means something accidental. But there are things that are not, you don't fall into, you commit them. And confess that kind of sin is an abomination before God. Because you purposely do it and this is something you will still do. So you being a Christian... And bearing that name to be a right name for you as to with your de decision. What have you determined in your mind? After his resurrection, what next? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to make up our mind to be children of God. Because if you are a child of God, I want to tell you the truth. If actually a child of God, you cannot commit sin. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 3, verse 9. Let's look at it. First John chapter 3, verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Look at verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. Bearing a wrong name. You say I'm a Christian, but your character does not reflect Christian even in your neighborhood. In the church of God, when we come to fellowship together, we fellowship in love. The Bible says God is love. 
And when there is no love in you, there is no God in you, and you don't have Christ. How long do we continue to seek Christ in a place where he cannot be found? In terms of challenges, in terms of problems, in terms of sickness, you don't remember he that died, that shed his blood, that even his stripes heals you. That is why we have this war. Let's consider ourselves beloved. In as much as we are together in the household of faith, we need to be in one mind, one love. How do you claim to be a child of God and the love of Christ is not found in you? Praise the name of the Lord. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. He said, Beloved, let us love one another. For God is love, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God towards us, because God sent his Son, his only begotten Son, into the world, that we, through him, might live. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, we should not just forget the Easter we just celebrated in the East. And we are waiting until the next one for remember. It should be a daily remembrance in our life. Jesus died for I and you that he will make way and create the access for you to come unto him. And as many that have come unto him, he has given a power to become a child of God. And one of the symptoms that you know that you're a child of God is when you are seeing yourself, you are living above sin. When you see yourself that you are still living in sin, my brother, my sister, you are not a child of God. The name Christians were given to the followers of Jesus Christ in Antioch. They behave like Christ. Little Christ. They, they, are, char they are characterized as Christ. Christian, watch yourself very well. The character you have, does it show, does it reflect the character of Christ? The character I have, does it reflect the character of Christ? I was praying one time. You know, people have been seeing and even daddy like using that comment. Sometimes you see ministers that minister salvation. They minister righteousness and holiness. But you see that they are still very poor. So most people are preaching righteousness and holiness. But they cannot afford to change someone's life. There is no impact from them. Apart from what they preach, there is no other impact. And when you see them, you know, they refuse to follow God, carry the Bible. When you see that kind of person, you say, ah, me, I cannot marry a man of God. I can't even be a man of God. Then I began to meditate and the Lord opened my eyes. Do you know what I saw? The Lord made me to understand that there are many, many, many that preach this word that will preach. They can preach holiness to the highest order. But that holiness is not reflecting in them. You are only seeing a camouflage. They don't have Jesus in them. Do you think it's a small thing for Christ to come and live in you? And that is why you see, there are people that you see, they have a very simple character. You know, you can't even predict them. The way, their lifestyle, the grace, God, the grace in their life, you don't understand them. These are the people that God has given the spirit. Not just, you know, when you comport yourself, you do, that is not where it is. And that is why when you begin to preach and fire, begin to preach against sin, you are trying to liberate people from the kingdom of darkness. And the devil stands to challenge you. And there is no Christ in you. You can't go anywhere. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I am a testimony. Our Papa is a testimony to this commission. I have been a witness 
of so many prophets, so many men of God, so many deliverance ministers that went for one prayer or the other. At the end, the devil just, you know, some of them die like chicken. I begin to ask God, why? I begin to know, ask. I came to understand that there are many that have not allowed Jesus to live in them as the way, the truth, and the life. And that is why when you are battling with the enemy and there's no Jesus in you, the enemy just goes after you. You will target and know the right time to get that person. Now, I know when a daddy goes for liberation, things like that, he doesn't actually pray, you know, fasting. Some people will do like 21 days prayer and fasting before they go. Even with the people he goes with, the grace covers them. I began to wonder. And somebody will now be saying, eh, that man they use, you cannot use the power of darkness to cast out darkness. Continue. One day you see it. Praise the name of the Lord. But when Jesus is in you, he teaches you the truth. He shows you the way. And he gives you the life. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, there are many people that preach this holiness. They preach it. You know, the way you see it, if you look very well, Jesus is not reflected in them. They are only trying to put on that holiness a doctrine. Hallelujah. I know of someone, I will not mention the person. If I mention it, you will know. I always believe, you know, this man preaches. In fact, in fact this man, if he's not number one in the heavenly week, because of the level of holiness preaching. But at the time I came to realize there are times even there are some demonic power that can manipulate you. You'll be walking under the influence you don't know. Until Jesus lives in you, you can't know the way. Until Jesus lives in you, you can't know the truth. Until Jesus lives in you, there is no lie. So, in as much as we have claimed to be Christian, beloved, let us do the next thing as Christian. Let's accept Jesus into our life. Let's allow Christ to direct us, to lead us well. From the testimony I daddy gave, I discovered something. You know, when one of our sisters, you know, when she got the visa and came to daddy, and say, Daddy, this and Daddy said, No, there is no light in it. Though some people will say, Daddy, you have to pray, put light in it. There must be light. But she just accepted. But do you know that as the time came, she started having an issue. Okay, I'm bored, stop paying her. That was an issue. I'm bored, stop paying her. Things start getting somehow. Do you know that some people at that point of time, when they go to their friend, when they go to seek counsel, in where counsel cannot be found, See, ah, see what's in the apple, no? My mother no agree pay me. She has not. What happened? Now? now I explain everything. Say, why you say, why will you go? And, must you go and make profit for everything? Now you made it. Say, look at, at that time, at that time, at that time, at that time. If she had complained and, you know, maybe with annoyance, leave the ministry, that would have continued like that. And that is how it will end. Now, the story will now be that God blessed him. And because, you know, you went to meet the man of God and asked you, no, for that one is not, for you to have ignored, that, that, that brought about, you know, the, the, the bad effects. And maybe she would have continued like that. And nobody would know what the glory that was awaiting her, that was how the story would have ended. But because she ignored and endured, she had the patience. That time, the devil, wanted to, the devil wanted to destabilize the glory ahead. And she continued. Eventually, the manifestation of the glory of God came to fulfill. Amen. Amen. I now note something. I want to pick something there. I want to pick something there. If she had actually complained in that time, I might be telling her, look at what the effect because you overbelieve in your prophet. Now look at what is happening. With that anger, now if you allow anger to 
to rule, to, to overtake you, to overwhelm you, you will make a serious mistake. But she didn't look that. When you are led by Christ, you can never make mistake. When you allow Christ to lead you, he will always show you the way. Because he said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am life. Praise the name of the Lord. It's just about dependence. You need to over depend on this Christ. Jesus is the only one that can deliver you from that thing that wants to change your address to a disgraced land. And what is it? Sin. I know I see that sign, but don't exchange your address with sin into a disgraced land. In as much as we are on the earth, we pray for God to bless us and for God to guide us. We still have an hope, a hope that one day, one day we shall have the expected rest in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my beloved, this morning, when having found the stone rolled away, the women, they wondered and consequentially the angel appeared to them and said, why do you look for the living among the dead? It's a question for every one of us. In times of trouble, where do you look for Christ? In times of trouble, in times of challenges, where do you look for Christ? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is the way, the truth, and the life. Just one thing, just one thing. If you can believe, if you can have faith in him, if you can receive him and make a decision in your heart that I want to I want to follow. See, you know, Jesus, when he said, I will give you power to become, it's not just you just relax. You must be hungry of him. The Bible says, blessed are those that are thirsty and hunger, hungry after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you are not thirsty of Christ, when you are not hungry of him, how will you be filled with Christ? And from the day Christ comes into your life, you begin to see the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. If you are a kind of person that whenever you are being provoked, you cannot control your anger. Any small thing you, go and check very well. The Holy Spirit has not come into you because when Christ is in you, there are some things, there are some expected qualities of a child of God that will be seen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So this morning, Easter is over. But at the back of our mind, if I don't put at the back of your mind so that you don't forget, put in the front of your mind. Amen. In the front of your mind, you should know that Easter was a day we remember what the sacrifice of Christ. And it is this sacrifice that is still keeping you till today. So whenever the devil comes to tempt you, you should be able to remember whose child you are. For those that are born of God does not commit sin. Because the seed of God liveth in them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So blessed be God for the resurrection of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ. If the resurrection did not take place, all the work of the cross would have been in vain. Now, the resurrection took place now. Despite the resurrection has taken place, some of us have not accepted the work, the sacrifice of the cross. May the sacrifice of the cross not be in vain in your life in Jesus' name. I pray may the sacrificial work of Christ on the cross never be in vain in your life in Jesus' name. Seeking the risen Lord in the wrong place. You begin to reflect your mind from now henceforth. Where will you seek God? Where do you seek God? Jesus is expected to be found in your heart. For he is the solution to every challenge. Amen. If a man is passing through challenges and is complaining and is being frustrated, check very well, Christ is not there. And when you see there are people who have seen, they don't have anything. But they are living happily in love. 
You begin to imagine. Can I endure if I was in their shoe? Amen. Amen. People like the apostles, they were not rich. But what they had was greater than the wealth. The physical wealth you saw. And I learned something in the scripture that God cannot allow you to be tempted beyond your ability to bear. Somebody was asking. The apostles, Stephen, Paul, Peter, all of them. You know the way they were crucified. You know the way they were killed. I told the person, I said, look, the level, the measure of faith is equivalent to the measure of the temptation God allowed a man to bear. You cannot compare the faith that the apostle have to the faith you have. Do you know why? If I was also in the days of the apostles, even when I will be faced with death, I will not fear. Do you know why? These are the people that walk with Christ. They saw him, they beheld him. They had the confirmation. This one is not about faith now. They know. They saw him, they saw everything. So when the challenges was coming, there was no level of challenges that was able to overcome their faith. The only person that did not see Christ was Paul. But because of the manifestation, the encounter he had, he now had the same reflection. That truly, truly, he had an encounter with God. And I didn't believe, I don't believe that the apostles, from the day they started their work till the day that I didn't believe they committed sin. I did not believe they committed sin. They quote me right. I didn't say fall into sin. There's a difference between falling into sin and committing sin. Committing sin is something that you plan, you do very, you know it's sin, you continue doing it. A child of God must not commit sin. At times, you know, there's something that will happen. You don't realize, ah, I just sinned. You fell into sin. And these are the sin that you confess that God will have mercy on you. Amen. In as much as you are not the child of God, you can commit sin. It's very, very possible. But when you are a child of God, it is impossible for you to commit sin. When you commit and fall, it is not easy to rise again. Amen. Amen. So the apostles, many of them were beheaded. Like Paul was beheaded with an engine saw. They crucified saw. They dragged one. They dragged him with the horse. They dragged him to pieces. The only person that escaped you know, violent death was John the Beloved. And that was the person that received the book of Revelation. And according to the history that we have, we have searched, he died at a full-grown old age. And when he was old, when they take him into the temple, they would hold him. He would always sing a song. say, love one another. Love, that was his message. Love, love. For God is love. You see, at times, when I'm ministering to my fellow Christians, how I wish we can have the, the kind of art I expect, the kind, the art of a Christian, the art of Christ, the art of love, the art of unity. So that the Easter will just celebrate, will just be in vain. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God cannot allow you to pass through what the apostle passed through because the size of your faith. They were read, what they passed through was equal to their faith. Was equal to their faith. The challenge of a man is always equal. It cannot be above your faith. The Bible says it that God, it says, temptation has not even come at all. Except those things that are meant for men to bear. But God is, uh, is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted more than your ability to bear. Because God will always make us a way of escape. So at times when we fall into sin or we commit sin, we now say it's the devil. Stop blaming the devil. Stop blaming the devil. Because after the resurrection, Jesus took power. He took power from elders and ages. And ages. And if you believe in him, the same power he gives to you to live above sin. Christian, we call ourselves, we bear a wrong name. Because our character does not reflect the name we bear. And for you not to bear a wrong name, you must begin to reflect what your name, you are being called, is. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to round up. 
I want to round up. You know, it's not every time you hear prosperity message, you jump, yeah, so receive it, you receive. Prosperity message is very good. But this one is where the message that will guide your soul. There are people that have not made it on this life. I listen, they still die and not still make heaven. Why not them accept Jesus fully and know the truth? The fact is that there is, see, the fact is that there is no comfort by your own power. The comfort comes in Christ. Once you accept Christ in you, you have comfort. Praise the name of the Lord. Once you receive Christ, allow Christ to lead you, you have comfort. That is why you see, you may see a woman that is being maltreated by her husband. And but she's enduring. She's not seen as anything. Because she has Christ in her, then she begins to manifest the fruit we call long suffering. At that time, you are seeing her suffering. But to her, she's not seen it. She's not seen as anything. Because the joy in her has overwhelmed whatever she's passing through. That was what happened to the apostles. When they wanted to stone Stephen, the joy in Stephen overwhelmed the, 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 the heat of the stone. Amen. To know that the sacrificial work of the cross that was cried out by our Lord Jesus Christ should not be in vain in our life. In as much as we are called Christians, we should be able to live to the expectation of that name, Christ's life. So if you don't have Christ in your life, if you're still finding yourself committing sin, living in sin, you know that something is not good, but you are doing it, that you are committing sin. You do it repeatedly. You need Christ to deliver you because you have not accepted him into your life. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Begin to tell the Lord that you have been bearing a wrong name. You know, when you are, you are bearing a name and you are not what you are, you are bearing a wrong name. Ask the Lord that the name Christian should begin to reflect in your life. God should give you the power to become his son, his daughter. Ask the Lord to give you the grace, the empowerment to live as expected. And that name Christian will manifest in our life. Ask him to give you the grace to always seek him and him only because many of us have sought him where he cannot be found. Mm. Father Lord, I pray for your children. I pray, oh Lord God, Daddy, in as much as I've opened our eyes to this hidden truth, I pray, oh Lord God, give us the power. Receive us unto yourself as your children. Cleanse us from every bondage and repercussions of sins. Deliver us from the captivity of the enemy. And give us the spirit of Christ that will become our way. That will teach us the truth. And that will give us life, even life eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.